In early 2017, former WWE star Paige, now known as Soraya in AEW's, private X-rated videos and photos leaked to the whole world. And these weren't just your run-of-the-mill celebrity leaked photos and videos, where it's just a little bit of nudity here and a little bit of nudity there. This leak was straight up the real deal, so much so that Paige could have been cast on an episode of Fake Taxi. Okay, maybe that was a little bit too far, but for real though, the leaking of those X-rated videos pushed her to the edge and she started spiraling out of control. As her substance abuse got worse, she developed anorexia and her hair was falling out due to stress. She even contemplated taking her own life. But how did it get to this point? Paige was born as Soraya Jade Bevis in Norwich, England in 1992, and she came from a family of wrestlers. Her mother actually famously unknowingly wrestled while she was 7 months pregnant with her. So even as a fetus in her mom's belly, she was taking bumps. It's no surprise that she started to train for wrestling when she was 10 years old, and she made her debut when she was 13 in her dad's wrestling promotion. She was clearly a prodigy and began to wrestle across several different promotions on the English independent circuit. Over the years before she had even turned 18, she was wrestling all across Europe and even went to the US to wrestle multiple times. That's why it was no surprise by the time that she was 19 years old, she was signed to WWE and was part of WWE's developmental FCW. This is where the anti-diva Paige was born. She impressed an FCW and when FCW converted into NXT in 2012, that's where she really shined bright. Management was very behind Paige. She went on an unbeaten run in NXT and was even the first ever NXT Women's Champion. She was clearly a force to be reckoned with and WWE promoted her to the main roster while she was still the holder of the NXT Women's Championship. On her very first night on the WWE main roster, she defeated AJ Lee in an impromptu title match, ending AJ Lee's almost one year iconic title reign. In the process, Paige became the youngest ever Divas Champion in history at 21 years old. That means that she is the only ever wrestler to hold the NXT Women's Championship and the WWE Divas Championship simultaneously, which is a massive achievement. She couldn't hold both titles though, so she had to relinquish the NXT Women's Championship, ending her reign at 300 days. Paige went on to be a major success on the main roster, and she was an important figure in the women's revolution. For the longest of times, women's wrestling in WWE was not really taken seriously, and quite frankly, the women weren't respected. Like, what is this? WWE women weren't really seen as anything more than sexual props for the male gaze, but Paige was one of the figures to change that. While she was beautiful, that wasn't the only thing that she brought to the table. She helped to shift the presentation and perception of women's wrestling in WWE. Her and her colleagues brought a new level of athleticism, storytelling and credibility to women's wrestling. She was part of the first woman in WWE history to be given more prominent roles, longer and more competitive matches, and more opportunities to showcase their skills and personalities. She was a superstar and fans loved her more than ever. But then again, not everything that glitters is always gold. Paige was actually struggling with the fact that she was famous and had so much money at such a young age, and so she began to make bad decisions. She started hanging out with the wrong crowd and lo and behold, she started doing cocaine. At this point, Paige basically said, I'm Take it easy! I'm what the scallop? I'm in love with the coco. Not only this, but she began to party and drink a lot too. What made things even worse was that she was having a lot of problems with her neck. Her neck was starting to give out, so much so that she often had to take time off to heal her neck. Eventually her drug habit caught up to her as in August of 2016, she failed her first drug test and was suspended for 30 days by WWE. On this occasion, she claimed to the public that she had not failed the test, but instead she didn't take the test in the allotted time which led to her failing the test. And just two months after her first suspension, she failed a second drug test and she was suspended for 60 days. This time she claimed that her doctor prescribed the medication for a neck injury that led her to her failing the drug test. While well, in all reality, none of the excuses that she made were true. WWE revealed that she tested positive for illegal substances. If she was to fail another drug test, then she would be fired from WWE as there is a three strike policy before wrestlers are out. She was on the cusp of being fired, struggling with alcohol and drugs, and she had to get surgery on her neck because it was in a really bad state. She went ahead and got the surgery on her neck, but she was proving to be more of a liability than an asset to WWE at this point. Everything was falling apart for her and the absolute worst was yet to come. While recovering from her neck surgery in March of 2017, Paige's world would be turned upside down as several pictures and videos leaked of her X-rated videos doing the business. 
The source of these videos was Paige's ex-boyfriend, Brad Maddox, who had taken all of these videos fornicating with Paige. He claims that he was hacked, but Paige believes that the leaked videos were revenge porn. The true reason for the leaks will never be known, but one thing was for certain, it immediately took a massive toll on her. She was quoted as saying, I was in San Antonio, and it was just the most awful period of my life. The person who I was with at the time showed me a picture on Twitter. I was just like, oh my god. I was like, is that real? Because I couldn't believe it was real at first. I was completely mortified. I ran out the house. I ran. I just kept running. I was hiding inside a fucking bush, thinking that if people recognize me, they're gonna know. I felt so fucking stupid and embarrassed, and I was already a fucking cokehead at this time, and I loved to drink. And that really got me to rock bottom where I didn't really want to be alive anymore, dude. It was fucking awful. I was so fucking sad. I remember being like, if my dad is disappointed with me, I don't think I could be here anymore. One of her colleagues in WWE, fellow wrestler Xavier Woods, was in one of the X-rated videos where he and another unidentified man were taking turns fornicating with Paige. Right after the leak, WWE acknowledged the leaked videos on TV in this segment. So is there something you want to... Tell us about WrestleMania. This caused there to be even more traction to the leaked videos. Sometime later, WWE even acknowledged the leaked tapes further on national TV in a rap battle. Just don't get all rated R like your boy Xavier Woods. Oh! Not gonna lie, WWE were really savage with that one. WWE didn't punish Xavier Woods and Paige for the leak, and they actually supported Paige and helped her to remove the leaks from as many places as possible. But then again, it's the internet, and when something spreads onto the internet, it's nearly impossible to scrub it out of existence. Paige was worried that her family wouldn't support her, but her family was very supportive and understood that all of this was not even her fault. Despite all the support that she received, she was still very much struggling and she developed depression. She recalled the time that she was sitting with her friends in a restaurant and someone asked for a picture and she said that she would do it after she finished eating and the person said, I only want it because you're a f***ing porn star. She also recalled the time that she was walking with a friend and she overheard a fan saying, that's the porn star, I jerked off to her yesterday. Both of these situations gave Paige a fear of going outside of her house. This caused her to barricade herself inside the house for months, but there were still a lot of trolls on the internet that had a lot of nasty remarks under every single social media post she made. The cyberbullying towards her was terrible and it affected her greatly. One silver lining in this situation is that this whole situation made her stop doing coke permanently, but she used alcohol as a crush to get her through her smothering depression. She was on the razor edge because of all of this and was contemplating taking her own life. She was deteriorating in real time and wasn't eating or sleeping. She also developed anorexia and started to lose her hair due to the stress that she was facing and her poor lifestyle. She was in such a bad state that WWE even had to intervene. She was quoted as saying, WWE really tried. They even brought me out to Connecticut at one point just to be like, do you need help? I was like, no, I'm good. I don't know what you're talking about. I got really small, I was like 115 pounds or whatever, for my height, that's really small. Yeah, I'm 5'8", everyone who saw me was just like, oh my god, you're alive? They would give me the biggest hugs and stuff like that, my whole body was shaking because I had so much anxiety, I was so embarrassed because of the sex tapes, and then I made a fool of myself with the drugs and being on the internet, it was just awful, I thought everyone was gonna hate me. I walked up to Hunter and he just gave me this huge hug. He said, I thought you were gonna die. I walked up to Stephanie and Stephanie gave me a big hug and said, I thought you were gonna die. Then I go to Vince. He looked at me for a second and then he's just like, come here. And he gives me a big hug and he was just like, I thought you were gonna die. They all had the same thing to say. They were just happy that I was alive and they were just like, this is your home. One person who also really got her through this situation was her fiancé and former WWE star Alberto Del Rio, now known as Alberto Alpatron. He supported her throughout this whole situation and always defended her from the vicious trolls who attacked her. However, their relationship was extremely turbulent to say the least. Paige and Alberto had one of the most toxic relationships in wrestling history. It was filled with public fights, domestic abuse, arrests and more. Her relationship with Alberto even almost got her fired from WWE at one point. Quite honestly, these two were the epitome of not meant for each other, but they were still together and were even due to get married. They eventually ended their relationship, but their toxic love story deserves a video of its own to be honest. Let me know if you'd like to see that video by the way, and leave a like on this video while you're at it. 
As much as there was a lot of cyberbullying on the internet, there was also a lot of support from fans that she was receiving and that really helped her to get out of the dark place that she was in. She realized that even though she was getting cyberbullied by a lot of people, she was still a massive inspiration to many, many people. Eventually, her neck healed up pretty well and she was cleared to return back to resting in late 2017, much to fans' joy. But unfortunately, just one month after she returned, she was injured in a match when another wrestler kicked her in the back, causing Paige to have whiplash and lose all feelings in her limbs at that moment. She tried to continue the match, but she looked like she had taken 45 beers the way that she was stumbling. She was basically like this. Julian! <laughs> That kick was the straw that broke the camel's back and caused her neck to give out. Paige recovered from this neck injury, but medical professionals told her that she would never be able to wrestle ever again. This forced her to retire from wrestling at the young age of 25, which was really sad. Her career was such a short and turbulent career, but WWE still had faith in her and she went on to become an on-screen non-wrestling character, mostly being in managing roles. WWE even began production on a movie based on her life and journey called Fighting With My Family. This movie featured Dwayne The Rock Johnson and released in 2019 and grossed over $40 million worldwide. Paige had fully bounced back from the dark days that she was in, but she left WWE a few years later in mid-2022. She went on to join WWE's biggest competitor, All Elite Wrestling AEW, going by her birth name, Soraya. In AEW, she was cleared to wrestle for the first time in 5 years, and now she's an active wrestler. She's also doing whatever this is on national TV. Britt Baker, DMD, and the AEW Women's World Champion, Jamie Hayter. Paige slash Soraya has been through a lot, but she ultimately bounced back and is now happier than ever. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos and also like, share, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye.